this segment, we're going to be talking about two problematic soils, collapsible soils and swelling or expansive soils. These soils let you up and let you down. There have been more damages from expansive soils than from any other natural hazard. In fact, for quite a long time, Jefferson County led the nation in claims for structural damages for home warranties. In some parts of the state, uh, particularly along the front range of Colorado, we have a particularly tough expansive soil hazard and it's called dipping bedrock. So you get some extreme differential movement and you get these heave ridges which go through roads and in this particular street we have a heave ridge which goes through the street all the way up through the house and has damaged the house. You can see the building is off kilter, the garage, the flatwork's been damaged. Many times a house can look good from the outside, but you'll see severe structural damages on the inside. The swelling pressures of these soils can be incredibly difficult to deal with. So you have pressures that are uplifting this house almost twice as much as the resisting pressures that keep the house down. So you get some extreme structural damages. These kinds of issues just don't impact the homeowner. They can impact an entire neighborhood and an entire community. What will happen in these areas is a lot of times the amount of repair needed to bring the house up to a livable condition is, is more than the house is worth or more than the homeowner can afford. And so you can see property values decrease across an entire neighborhood and an entire community. Expansive soils also damage roads, utilities, sidewalks, curb and gutter. One of the telltale signs of the expansive soils in an area is a lot of damage in the streets, a lot of uh, sidewalks that are damaged, a lot of curb and gutter that's damaged or that's been recently replaced. One of the things that can happen is when curb and gutter and sidewalks become damaged, they become trip hazards. Um, drainage does not properly drain so you can get um, icy spots in the winter for cars and for um, folks traveling on the sidewalks, especially for, for older folks or uh, disabled folks. So it becomes safety hazards in other ways. The map that we have here shows the extent of steeply dipping or heaving bedrock along uh, Jefferson County, Douglas County, and El Paso County. And you can see it's very close to the mountain range. As the, as the mountains were uplifted, they brought those sediments up with them. And so it's a very narrow range along the front range where you get those steeply dipping beds. We're at the site of an elementary school in southern Jefferson County, and this building here looks pretty good, but it didn't look so great um, a few years ago. This school had to be rebuilt. It was so damaged from expansive soils that at any one time, the school officials didn't know what door would open, what window would open. Um, it was it became difficult to predict when they could get kids out safely. The floors were uneven, they became trip hazards. There wasn't much they could do but tear the building down and start over again and build it with some mitigation measures to combat the expansive soils. From an emergency management point, being able to get the kids out safely is important, but schools also serve as emergency shelters. So it's very, they really are critical facilities in a community. So when one becomes damaged to such an extent that it can't be used, it really is a community issue. Not only was the school damaged, but the subdivision in the surrounding area, many of the homes were damaged. They used an unusual technique to try to mitigate those damages in this area. They formed what was very similar to what we might call a geologic hazard abatement district. Um, when the homes became damaged, they approached the builder about the damages and the builder set up a trust fund that stays with the individual property. And the homeowners association took this trust fund and invested this trust fund. So instead of a mortgage company taking over these homes and these homes turning into rental properties, uh, they fixed the homes and stabilized the neighborhoods. You can also get damages from expansive soils during a drought. When the water dries out of the clays, they'll shrink often you'll start to see structural damages during that shrinkage period. You'll see damages in pavements, you'll see sidewalks pulling away, you'll see the front steps pulling away. Sometimes we'll see things like gas lines and electrical lines breaking. Expensive soils and bedrock 
are a very expensive problem, a very widespread problem in Colorado, but they are a geologic hazard that can be dealt with if they're properly evaluated and mitigated. You have to recognize them very early in the planning process and you have to do a good site investigation and use proper design. On the evening news, you'll see people who have lost their homes from floods or wildfires. But I don't think we've ever seen a news story about someone who's lost their home due to expansive soils. It isn't covered by any kind of homeowner's insurance. We have had cases of people whose homes were so severely damaged they really couldn't live in them anymore. Often what will happen is people will invest their life savings in a home and when it becomes so damaged that they can't shut their windows or shut their doors and safely live in their homes, they have to leave them. And, and many times people will lose their life savings um, from structural damages. What we do at the Colorado Geological Survey is try to educate people so that they are aware of potential geologic hazards, including expansive soils. We try to educate people about how to maintain their home, how to look for um, expansive soils damages, how to mitigate for those, but more importantly, how to plan for them and to try to avoid them. Not only are expansive soils widespread in Colorado, but collapsible soils are widespread. The Roaring Fork Valley uh, in Colorado, above Glenwood Springs, has seen a lot of problems with uh, collapsible soils. In these incised river valleys, you get a coalescing of alluvial fans uh, along the sides. It's those types of deposits, generally fine-grained with, with a lot of silt and clay, where we see those soils develop that are most prone to uh, a collapse. Collapsible soils, when they settle, any structures that, that's on them is going to settle with it. The type of typical features you see are offsets in, in your concrete slab. You'll see uh, an unhinging of, of a structure where one side is dropping down, the other side isn't. I'm standing next to a road cut in alluvial fan soils. These soils are very loose, very low density. They're deposited by a succession of mud flows out of the hills above us here. They're highly susceptible to collapse when they become wet. The neighborhood above here has had a lot of problems with a settlement related to uh, that type of uh, subsidence. We're here looking at a building on the western slope in Colorado of a building that's had problems with compressible or collapsible soils. So what you're seeing is, is you're seeing the cracks in the concrete. Everything kind of looks like it's moving downhill is kind of what it looks like. So with the cracks and the settling and stuff, you know, we're having problems with the building and the foundation. It's sank about four inches on the eastern side. You can see the crack in the wall and it's gotten so bad that you can see the light shining through it. And if you follow it up just to the right, you can see where the weld on the roof beam is actually sheared. So, you know, it requires quite a lot of force for that to happen. Part of what I'd recommend is, is first of all, you know, be very diligent in your construction management, making sure that the building, the drainage is getting away from the building and it's in conformance with your plans and your plans reflect that. And also, if you are going to consider a deep foundation, don't make the decision based on money because, you know, you may be putting that money into the building in the long run. Glenwood Springs, as with most areas of western Colorado, has a long and expensive history dealing with collapsible soils. Recent examples, even when the hazard was known, include an $11 million settlement to repair damages at an apartment complex and $4 million needed to repair new city facilities. Collapsible soils are generally a dry, low-density soil, and dry is the key. If you can keep that soil dry, it may behave properly. So I think the biggest key is water management. Being sure that the soils around your house and below your house stay dry. Irrigation is critical. And you want to make sure that you have positive drainage all around the structure. You want to make sure you have rain gutters on all your roofs and then the downspout should be directed away from the house. Collapsible soils are, it's kind of an unseen hazard. It's not as dramatic as debris flows and earthquakes and, and uh, landslides. Problematic soils in Colorado, be it collapsible soils or swelling soils, are the most expensive geologic hazard in Colorado. Here at the Colorado Geological Survey, if we can get a real understanding of those types of deposits and those types of risks before any development occurs, then we don't have to hear about those examples where the hazards were identified and not really addressed, and now they're spending as much money as it costs to build a structure to fix it. Don't let the ground get you down. This is an expensive geologic hazard in Colorado.